Next here on BBC Two, The Forbidden Weekend continues with the first network television screening of Ken Russell's controversial film, The Devils, starring Oliver Reed and Vanessa Redgrave. The first one I went to see was the House of Wax. As far as I remember, I was the only person in the upstairs part of the cinema while the film was being shown. And uh, so I couldn't actually see another living being uh, while the film was on. And I remember having read somewhere that uh, someone had died during a press showing in London, had uh, died of terror. And uh, obviously this is hardly the thing to tell a, a rather susceptible 15 or 16 year old. And uh, I was uh, rooted to the spot with terror during the film. I seem to remember bits where people's faces were melting. Uh, you know, just uh, wax faces, obviously, rather than real faces. And most, m many of the effects that uh, are in there now would be seen as the stuff of children's television. But at the time, uh, they were utterly terrifying. But I probably went back home and told my nanny that I'd have been to see the next film, and she'd have disapproved as a matter of course. Yeah, I knew a little boy who died going to the next film, Monty John. your television. Adjust your mind to the twilight world of the outer limits. He has come to Earth seeking help. What do you need from us? Your dead. Give us your dead. When the dividing line between life and death is crossed, when alien beings take human form, the consequences know no bounds. The Outer Limits next Monday at 9 on BBC Two. Ingmar Bergman's The Silence is the final film in our Forbidden Weekend at 12.45. Loneliness and sexual obsession in the story of an incestuous relationship between two sisters. Now on BBC Two, as part of cinema's centenary celebration, the Forbidden film premiere, Alex Cox recalls the turbulent history of a movie that divided the censors. The Devils was directed in 1970 by Ken Russell. It was released the following year. The longish gap between its making and its being shown had to do at least in part with the extraordinary controversy it provoked within the ranks of the BBFC. The Devils was, as you may already know, based on Aldous Huxley's book, The Devils of Luno. It's set in France during the reign of Louis XIII. The country is torn apart by religious and political strife, and the increasingly powerful and sinister Cardinal Richelieu, having suppressed the Huguenots, orders the destruction of all fortifications in provincial towns in order to strip power from the dissenting nobles. It's a true story, and it sounds utterly boring, right? Especially when the hero is a libertarian priest caught in the throes of guilt and moral dilemma. But it's not boring. The writer and director, luckily, is Ken Russell. The cameraman is David Watkin, who also shot Charge of the Light Brigade and Catch-22. And the designer, truly at his finest here, is the late Derek Jarman. And what could have been a turgid tale of human rights versus intolerance becomes much more an intense, at times surreal, at times hideously realistic story of religious and sexual obsession and oppression. I won't attempt to describe it. Even before the film had finished shooting, stories were being told of prurience and assaults on naked extras, for which Russell apparently apologised. When he submitted the film to the BBFC, the adjudicator responded, I consider this to be a nauseating piece of filmmaking. The mood of the examiners was to ban the film outright. It was a year after the surprise election of Edward Heath, and there was already considerable right-wing pressure to suppress the alleged permissive society. Altogether, one and a half minutes were removed from the devils, and that is the version which we'll be seeing tonight. One of the only people to see the uncut version, interestingly, was Michael Winner, and he apparently said it should not have been cut. 
Inevitably, the film caused controversy. Vincent Canby in the New York Times deplored its oversimplification and the low quality of Russell's imagination. The Los Angeles Times called The Devils a truly degenerate and despicable piece of art. At the Venice Film Festival, the film was not shown to the public, but was screened for a select coterie of critics and invited guests. Oliver Reed, who plays the libertine priest, Father Grandier, bitterly demanded to know why this hypocrisy? Why is it permissible to describe historic events in books and plays, though they must not be shown on the screen? A good question. In this country, the devils proved highly controversial. Mrs. Mary Whitehouse's National Festival of Light denounced the film. The campaign against the devils, it's interesting to recall, was coordinated by a public relations executive from the anti-union group Aims of Industry, who, it later emerged, had been committed in 1965 to an indefinite period in Broadmoor for an attack on three au pair girls with a knife. He blamed the assault on sex and violence in film. I'll leave the last word to the current director of the British Board of Film Classification, James Furman. The Devils is a film that was very controversial at the time. It's a particular moment in censorship history when all the controversial issues of censorship came together and outraged the public before the film was even seen because of the style, and it's a very irreverent style. The, the version that's on the screen tonight is, is, is a UK release version um, that, that had the attention of the board and that was greatly admired by John Trevelyan and Lord Harlech. And I think it's very important to say that it was the president of the board who stopped some examiners with great influence um, from cutting the film further. He admired the film greatly. He's a, Rus Russell is a Catholic. He knows his subject. And uh, this film deserves to be shown. He has a point there. His Excellency has a point. A lot of its shock value uh, was in the nudity, which was unprecedented in a mainstream film in those days. Um, the only time we'd seen that much nudity on the British screens was, was the, the silly nudist colony films of the, uh, the early 60s. <laughs> Many members of the board thought it was excessive um, and thought it was uh, shameful and disreputable and uh, you know, not something that we should support and needed to be, to be uh, cut very heavily. Most of the examiners recognized the power of the straight scenes. Um, one of the remarkable things, seeing the film again after all these years, is how much that power is retained even in 24 years after its opening. <laughs> The Antichrist has spoken! But in the end, after several cuts had been made, and, and I know they did pick away at the orgy of sex-crazed nuns. There's still quite a lot left, and it's interesting to read that uh, Russell now thinks, well, perhaps filmmakers um, aren't the best judge of their material. They love it too much, he wrote. Um, and it may well be that Russell today, if he were asked, wouldn't want to put all those things back in the film. One of the problems with um, achieving shock value by the breaking of taboos is that once those taboos are eroded through history, uh, the scenes in question may not have the same power. And I think the, the, the sex-crazed nuns today look a bit silly. <laughs> In America, Warner Brothers were so outraged, the head of Warner Brothers was so outraged by the film, that they cut a further four minutes and 20 seconds. And uh, to my very great regret, it is the, the American version uh, that's out on video in Britain, and I think it's a great pity. All the nudity was cut, most of the sex was cut, uh, the, the violence was cut down even beyond what we passed in this country. They were attempting to impose their idea of good taste on this film and really transformed it into a, into a different kind of film. You can't impose good taste on Ken Russell. Russell is Russell, and it's a lost cause. You've got to give him his head to some extent. He's a one-off.